Welcome back. This, of course, is Morning Rush Entertainment. I'm surprised. I'm surp I suppose you're surprised to see me here, but anyway. Here I am. <laughs> now, in our first hour, we spoke to a highly innovative music composer, performer, Sharon Butler in Glovo, and uh, we're now joined by Tare Takudzwa Chirewa, visual artist and cultural practitioner who's been in the industry for a whole 10 years, a decade. Now, Tare, welcome to Morning Rush. Thank you. Oh, well, that's morning. a nice smile for a great morning. <laughs> Thank you. I like that smile. Now then, first of all, I've got to ask you this. German, German society, so why would German society, Goth Centrum, how I'm going to say this terribly, Sprechen der Deutsch. Genau, ein bisschen. Oh, there you go. <laughs> did I say it right though? Yes, you did. You did. <laughs> that's brilliant. You did. Now then, first of all, before I get into anything, and it's interesting because I must be honest, I don't do entertainment, visual artist. Mm -hmm. What exactly is a visual artist, I suppose? Oh my goodness, can I just answer as what I do? In yeah, how about that? How about that? <laughs> um, I paint and I draw. So visual arts is your paintings, your drawings, right. sculpture, mm. installations, that sort of thing. Oh wow, that sounds yeah. exciting. I wish I was an artist. I'm so bad at painting. Anyway, I suppose. You should so try. Now, There's no such I thing as bad. I should try, yeah? Yeah, because even a bad painting is so a good painting. It's your interpretation. Thank you. Oh, I, I like you very much. Now then, 10 years in the industry. I mm -hmm. mean, wow, I'm sure you've seen ups and downs, changes. I mean, first of all, talking about where you started now, then to now, has, mm -hmm. what have you noticed in the landscape of, of the arts or the visual artist environment? Wow. Um, I think it's changed a lot. Mm -hmm. A lot more open, I suppose, because when I started, I was very young. I was in my 20s. Okay. And... Then, I mean, the first thing that people would say is when they walked into the office, they'd be like, oh, you're young. <laughs> and then it's, oh, you're a woman. So now you see more representation, more yeah. younger people. Um, I think we're becoming a bit more open-minded. We're not where we should be, but we're a bit mm. more open-minded and mm. we're actually acknowledging the talent and the creativity that's within Zimbabwe. Yeah. But one thing I have noticed talking to artists, of course, is still the financial side of it in terms of selling your work or, mm. or people sponsoring you. I mean, that still seems to be an issue. It seems as if people don't want to put money into arts in particular. In this kind of, or if they don't, maybe they don't see it as a, as a good investment opportunity. I don't think that's the case. I think it's actually just lack of knowledge okay. that, you know, it's something that you can put money into and it's an investment long term. Mm. Um, because we didn't grow up with a culture of appreciating the creative space and, you know, the work that's being done by artists, mm. we don't have, we don't put value, we don't put the right value on it. Mm. So because of that, we then don't appreciate and mm. decide to invest in it because we think, well, this is a luxury thing. We're not going to put money into that. Right now we're focusing on bread and butter, right? So the more people know about what art is and just, you know, the income it contributes to the GDP, mm. the better mm. the investment levels will be yeah. at the end of the day. Now, we had, a, uh, have an, uh, had an article in one of our sister newspapers about Dominic Benoit. He was talking about how it's an inspiration mm -hmm. rather than a you know, calling sort of thing. I mean, you have a fine arts degree, right? Is yes. that correct? So is this, is, this an inspir is this a calling? Is it something that like, you just needed to do? You know what I mean? Like, like, I, like I need to be an economist, I suppose. <laughs> I guess I, it was because, I mean, I knew I wanted to be an artist from the age of five. Mm. So it was, I think it was just something that I knew I had to do. Okay. And when I kind of did bad at it, I was wondering, okay, if I'm <laughs> failing now, <laughs> what am I going to do? There's no other options because my life was focused on just that. Yeah. So, yes, I think... Well, it depends on it who it is. It depends on who you are. Yeah. So yeah. tell us about some of the exhibitions that you've done locally, internationally. I mean, I, I, hear, I read there you were, you were something about uh, Vienna. You were part of the Vienna Pavilion at the Zimbabwe 20, 2013 Zimbabwe Pavilion at Venice Biennial and sat on the Zimbabwe Pavilion Advisory Committee. So talk about your own personal works that you've done here and the kind of things that you've done to promote art in, in Zimbabwe. Wow. Um, so when I finished university, my focus was on practicing, and I thought that was something I was going to do for a while. Mm. And then I ended up getting into the admin of art, so on the back end of it. And um, I had the opportunity as part of the National Gallery to go and sit in the pavilion for the six months and talk about the work that was up at the time and interact with the people that came in to see the work, as well as just see the Biennale at the time then. Mm. And then a few years later, um, now that I was at the Zimbabwe German Society, where we are a cultural space that promotes the creative and cultural industries through grants and um, the offering of the space, mm. um, then I got to be on the advisory committee mm. panel. Right. For and if I wanted to see your one. work, where do I go? Is your work up? Is it at the National Gallery or is there like, how do Not I, how do I buy it if I wanted to buy one of your pieces? You would have to actually come to me. Oh, 
Oh. At the moment, I've only been doing commissioned work. I haven't, done, I haven't been working on any body of work as such. Okay, yes. right. You did mention the uh, Zimbabwe German Society Goth Centrum, I hope I pronounced that right, Harare. I mean, that, that's a re reputable, renowned center for promoting arts. Maybe just mm -hmm. a little bit more about that, because you said that they do provide grants and stuff. T tell us about that. Um, so we offer the space to creatives to use, um, usually for concerts, theatre, anything, mm. workshops, the like. I mean, our mandate is to promote the contemporary cultures of both Zimbabwe and Germany. Um, and annually, we get a grant from the Goethe Institute, which mm. is the cultural body of the German government. And we use that money to support creators within the country based on thematic points for the oh. year or what the plan had been the year before. We are trying to open it up a bit more because it is a bit stringent yeah. with the planning in September the year before. So we put out calls mid-year. So if you look out for that, in June, there will be some calls going out for some small grants, some bigger grants. And oh, yeah, excellent. we then kind of yeah. have an independent jury yeah. that comes and selects yeah. and looks at the projects that are there yeah. and whether they've responded to the call properly or not. And That's excellent. Well, I mean, yeah, we, need that, we need that sort of support here in the country. Now, mm -hmm. I have managed to sneak in one of your paintings. I wonder if Ooh. we can put it up, yeah. Because it'd be interesting <laughs> for me to understand. One. Well, we managed to get one. I just want to understand sort of the message that you try and portray in the paintings, the, the sort of subjects that you do. I mean, what, that, what is that called and, and what, 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 do you, what do you depict hmm. when you paint? So initially that was a self-portrait, which I did in university. Okay. <laughs> really long time ago, and I decided to rework it. Um, it's still unfinished, and it has no name, but it is a self-portrait. Mm, mm. And I'm kind of trying to experiment and see what I can do with it and where I can take it. And do you have a central, I mean, do you do, do, do portraits? Or do you have buildings? I mean, some people do countryside, some people do horses. What, what, is, what, is, what is your main theme, or is it really what just hits your creativity at the time? It's been mainly portraits, but I'm also trying to move away from that. So right mm. now I'm just painting and letting things happen the way they should. That's excellent. That's yeah. excellent. Now, you know, I always like you, you're a podcaster, blogger, speaker. I mean, wow, well, it, it's a lot of balance in your life. <laughs> it is. It <laughs> really is. <laughs> But well, you seem to be doing it so well. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me about this blogging and, and, and all of the stuff that you do outside of painting. Um, so the podcast, I have one that I started a while pre-COVID, which was on single parenting. Um, I would interview guests and have them to share their journey, which is kind of therapeutic for them, as well as anyone that's going through it. The whole idea was to get people to start talking about it and to normalize it and because our community sometimes can be a bit harsh and mm. mean and, mm. you know, mm. segregates mm. Mm. of sorts. So that was the reason for that one. And then and the other one, anti Talk, is with some friends that we decided as we were entering our 30s, we're just going to have conversations yeah. right. that we want to have that we normally do not. Mm. Right, we only have a little time left. I could speak mm. to you all day because it's so interesting. But just before we go, quickly, you are passionate and really at the forefront of women coming into the creative sector. Maybe just very mm. briefly talk about that. I mean, we have so much creativity in this country. And mm. I feel that most of the time, because of the way we are raised as women, we tend to then focus on everything else except our passions and what makes us happy. So yeah. I think giving the space and the platform for women to find themselves, figure themselves out, and to actually express themselves is something that I like to push. Because being asked, oh, you're a woman and you're the director in this day and age, yeah, it not doesn't be make happening. It, yeah, yeah, 100% right. <laughs> Tawita well, thank you so much for coming on Morning Rush. It was really a pleasure talking to you. Thank you for having me. Well